Hello, my name is Nash Poshetek and I would like to welcome you to this one extra video around Pavitol Agents in Teams how-to and step-by-step -step introduction where I would like to show you how you can use a suggested topics functionality in uh, in, and, in topics, uh, well in, yeah, topics area because that was one of the functionalities that I've been asked how to use it. So once you navigate to topics, apart from these that are created automatically once you provision the bot and these that you create by hitting this new topic button here that I showed you in the, per in the previous video. There is also this functionality that helps you or that lets you to create topics by providing a URL to a docx or xlsx or PDF file that is containing these uh, question and answers um, structured data or to a web page that is also structured in that Q&A approach. So I've created a file it looks like that. It's a simple Q&A file with questions uh, around the specific areas of help. Based. Now, what is important in that structure of the file is not that it has to follow this um, header and no header approach or that it has to have a question bolded or something. No, the point is that the question has to be a question. So if I write, I can use Microsoft Excel, then the suggested topics um, AI mechanism won't discover this as a question. But if I add this why, so if I make a question out of this sentence, then it will be discovered as a topic, um, as a question, and therefore the pair here is going to be used as a question and an answer. So this is how it looks like. Now I need to provide the URL. Uh, also, it is important that the file has to be stored somewhere publicly. So it doesn't, it, it cannot be a location where um, that requires a file or the session to be authenticated. So you can't use share, share, uh, SharePoint, you can't use OneDrive. You can use Azure Storage with the public access. You can use your blog, you can use FTP, anonymous FTP, but it has to be just available publicly without any um, request requirement for, uh, for authentication. Plus, the URL has to be available over the HTTPS, so it has to be secured. So that's the URL for my uh, for my question and answer. Now the second thing that I want to show you is that you can as well use is that you can as well use um, the web pages. So I have here a website from the WHO around COVID, and as you can see, it is really structured in the Q and A way. So we have questions, and then under the question there is an answer. So I'll as well copy this URL and add it as a second content that will be processed by the suggested topics functionality. Now once I hit start, you'll see that there is this message at the top. You can simply now continue your work, you can navigate away. This is something happening on the server side. So now the bot is simply um, crawling, browsing those contents that I have provided and it's trying to discover the questions and answers. Now once it is done, you will see it is uh, everything that it was found is going to be present under the suggested left uh, tab. Okay, so it has completed. You can see that it, have, uh, it has found 21 new topic suggestions that are present here. So now I can navigate here and to see what it has found. So as you can see, there are these topics that are created from my file from my um, Word document, plus the recent number of topics that were created from the Q&A side of, the other, of uh, WHO. How do they look like? Well, they're very, very simple. They're just built from the question and the answer, and that's it. There is nothing else. However, what you can do now is to select which of these topics you would like to actually add, and then hit the button to add to topics. So these that you've marked are going to be moved now to the existing list. All right, so these are the topics that I have actually created and that I have actually marked to be added to uh, my existing topics. And right now I can simply go to the authoring canvas and I can actually edit it, I can change it. I can as well add new um, trigger phrases so that I can extend the possible discoverability and the fact that the bot is going to navigate to that one. 
What is also important, once you're done, you need to remember to turn on these topics because once they're turned off, they won't be um, they won't be used by the bot in the conversations during the conversations with the user. So remember that the last thing you have to do is to hit on. And then once it is turned on, you need to simply type a question. what should trigger this conversation. And it did it correctly, so it displayed the information. Where should the user navigate to create a new site? And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Power Virtual Agents introduction. If you like this video, then obviously subscribe, leave a comment below and thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time.